what are the theories behind these bond formation so this is what we are going to study in this video starting with valence bond theory you know for bond formation atoms must come close to each other so here we have two atoms a and b with their electron and nucleus labeled as ea na and eb nb so now what happens for bond formation atoms come close to each other initially when they are far away from each other no forces come into existence but as soon as they start coming close to each other attractive forces come into existence so here attractive forces will be between the electron of atom a and nucleus of atom b similarly attractive force will be in between electron of atom b and nucleus of atom a that means ea and then b and eb and na now what happens when atoms are coming close to each other but after a certain extent when their nucleus are very close repulsive forces come into existence so for these two atoms repulsive forces will be between ea and eb and na and nb now what happens a point comes when attractive forces is equal to the repulsive forces at this point the internuclear distance between these two atoms is known as its bond length now we can plot a graph between the internuclear distance and the potential energy associated with it you can see here in the figure that initially when atoms are far away from each other there is no attraction forces or repulsive forces acting between them means no interaction but slowly and steadily when atoms approach each other attraction forces come into existence and at that point energy is continuously decreasing and when the nucleus are very near to each other repulsive forces come into existence and you can see at the deepest point in this graph where attractive forces and repulsive forces are equal that internuclear distance between the two atoms is known as its bond length now what we conclude from the graph that larger the amount of energy released more stronger is the bond formed according to valence bond theory lowering of energy takes place when atomic orbitals come close to each other and leads to the formation of a bond now for the formation of a bond atomic orbitals must come close to each other and also they overlap with each other a covalent bond is formed by the partial overlap of the atomic orbitals containing electron with opposite spins that means partial overlap of an atomic orbital takes place for the bond formation and as a result the electron cloud of both the atomic orbitals become common now here i am saying again and again that atomic orbitals should overlap on the basis of overlapping different type of bonds is formed so here first thing let's see overlapping takes place in two ways so first one that is axial or head on overlapping and another one it is parallel or sideways overlapping in axial overlapping what happens is two atomic orbitals overlap with each other along the internuclear axis as a result of which a sigma bond is formed so with axial or head on overlapping sigma bond is formed similarly in case of a parallel or sideways overlapping where atomic orbitals overlap parallelly or in the direction at right angles to the internuclear axis as a result of parallel overlapping a pi bond is formed now let's see how axial overlapping takes place in different orbitals so starting with ss orbitals so here in the diagram you can see that two s atomic orbitals are overlapping with each other and as a result of their overlapping along the internuclear axis a sigma bond is formed 
and the overlapped orbital that is a SS overlapped orbital that is formed. Now coming to another one that is when 1s and 1p orbital overlap with each other. So here sp orbital is formed and here also due to axial overlapping a sigma bond is formed. Now coming to the third one that is pp overlapping means 1p orbital of an atom combines with another p orbital of other atom as a result of which pp sigma bond is formed. So this was all about axial overlapping in which ss, sp and pp overlapping takes place and sigma bond is formed. Coming to the second category that is parallel or sideways overlapping. In this SS overlapping couldn't take place. Why so? We know that S subshell is spherical in shape, so all the axes are same. So, coming to the parallel or sideways overlapping, it takes place only with PP orbital. When P orbital of one atom overlaps sideways or parallelly with P orbital of another atom, then PP sideways overlapping takes place as a result of which a pi bond is formed.